Hi, I'm Sarah Mean. Today we're sewing the Mercot Puffer Vest by Cashmere Patterns. This pattern is part of their monthly club membership called Cashmere Club. You can find out more about it by visiting cashmere.com slash club or visiting the link in the description. Let's get sewing. I'm going to walk you step by step on how to sew the Mercot Puffer Vest. If at any time that you want to find a particular step, look in the description for timestamps and one will be listed. You can jump right to that step. Also, if you look at the bottom of the video, there are chapters and you can hover over each chapter to find what it's about and skip to that step as well or rewatch it. You can also change the speed if you want, speed it up, slow it down, however you like by using the speed control settings. And you can also enable closed captions or subtitles if that helps you. This Mercot puffer vest was made using a cross weave lightweight cotton fabric and a lightweight cotton lawn on the inside. The snaps are a 20 line spring snap. And I used a wool batting meant for quilt making um, that I go over a little bit when I do the basting of the wool to the fabric. You don't need any special tools. You might want some marking tools that are temporary. And I'm gonna walk you through every step and give you lots of tips and tricks along the way. Let's get to it. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna be sewing view B, which has the curved quilt lines. If you're sewing view A, you wanna mark your quilt lines on your outer shell pieces, one, two, and three. I'm gonna be marking my lines on my shell in just a minute so you can check that out. So after you've marked your quilt lines for view A or you're starting view B, you're going to sew your princess lines together on your piece one and two. So if you have an obvious right side, what I would do is just pair them up right now. And if you don't have an obvious right side, you wanna make sure you get a left and a right. All right, so we're gonna be using a half inch seam allowance, unless I say otherwise. You're gonna line up all of your notches along this edge. And if you want to put a few pins in there, go for it. We don't need to finish this seam since the vest is lined. All right, you're gonna to wanna to press that seam towards the center front, and now we're gonna repeat for the other side. All right, so now I'm gonna sew my side seams together to the back, and then after that, I'm gonna press all of these seams at one time. So we're gonna line up our back right sides together. You'll notice sometimes I don't pin, but if you wanna pin or use clips, go for it. Um, they are very helpful. I like to control the fabric on each layer. Sometimes I just find that a little easier, but I use pins too. I always get it started, let my machine work as like an extra helping hand, and then I go for it. I can see this little layer right here sticking out further, so I go underneath and I pull it to line up. All right, now we're gonna go press up these seams. We're gonna press the, the princess line towards the center front. We're gonna press the side seam towards the back. I'm just gonna give it a good press right now because we're gonna quilt this soon and we don't really wanna immortalize any of the wrinkles. My fabric was particularly wrinkled after I washed it. So I'm just going over it a little bit more. Things like center folds, get rid of that now because once you quilt it, it's gonna be a lot harder to get rid of that. It'll, it'll go away in the laundry as long as you've picked materials that are easily laundered. All right, next we're gonna stay stitch the necklines and the armholes. And we're gonna start from the shoulder and go down from every shoulder point that is at the top of a neckline or an armhole. And we're gonna do this because our, our little vest here is gonna get a ton of handling while we're quilting it. And we really wanna stabilize these areas, especially these curved areas. So I'm gonna stitch at my regular stitch length and I'm just gonna go just inside the seam allowance. These are all areas that have a lot of bias in the fabric, especially these curves here, and you don't really want those to get away from you and get larger and larger or stretched out. 
especially because when we do the quilting too, we need these pieces to be very flat. It's a lot of vest to handle. Right, so then and now I'm just gonna flip it. Doesn't matter if you go from the right side or the wrong side. You can see I'm also like holding my vest up just so that like, see when it starts hanging off the table, it can get a little stretched out and you don't want that to happen. So I'm always kind of holding up my garment so it doesn't get stretched out in these areas. I'm definitely one of those people that might skip stay stitching occasionally. I'm definitely not always following the rules, but this is definitely one you probably want to do. All right, so we have, I think the front neck and a back neck. And the reason we're always going from the same direction down is that it just keeps it really uh, consistent. You know, you can change the torque of the fabric a little bit if you are going different directions. You can't always do that on everything you sew, but on something like this, um, it's absolutely possible. So we wanna do that as much as we can. And even on the center back neck here, I'm gonna go to the center back, stop and then flip it and do the same thing on the other side. All right, just like that. And now we have our whole garment stay stitched. And now we're getting ready to do all the fun stuff with the quilting. I know you're probably a little nervous about it, me too, but we're gonna do this together and it's gonna be great. Okay, so we're to the step where we're gonna mark view A for our quilt lines on the outer shell. So you need your template uh, cut out just like this. And I'm gonna be using this little tool that just kind of I don't want to say it scores the fabric, but it's kind of a similar thing. So when I draw on here, it's not actually adding anything on top of the surface of the fabric. Maybe you can see those lines. You probably won't be able to see them though. It'll probably look like magic when I go to quilt it, but it's something that um, isn't like chalk or anything like that. It's called a Hera marker. So I just wanted you to know that um, that's what you're, I'm doing and you probably won't be able to see it very well, but this thing works really great for me. So just make sure that you test whatever you're using on your fabric, that it will indeed wash out or whatever, and um, that it will last until the time that you start to quilt it. We're gonna go to another camera and I'm gonna show you marking my vest. All right, here we are at the pattern table. I have my front all laid out here and we have our quilt template cut out. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna line up the edge, so these rounded edges to the center back of your vest. So I'm gonna draw a line that you probably won't be able to see, but I will. And now I can line these edges up to that center line. So you always wanna line up the quilt template to the bottom here, just like this, and then make sure that you put all of these little curves right up to that center back line. And now you're going to mark your curves. All right, now we're gonna do the other center back side here. So same thing, we're gonna line it up just like this. All right, so now we're ready to move to the center front. So I wanna give you a little tip on selecting how you place this because obviously if you're not using the horizontal lines, this one's gonna be a little bit more fussy to place on certain sizes. And on my size, if I line this up to the center front and we wanna make it one and a half inches away from this cut, cut edge here. So uh, I'm gonna give myself a little guide. So on my size, if I line this up to the center front here and trace it off, it puts, it puts this line of circles right here, right? So let's just put my ruler right here. And now I have this space between this curve here, it's right here. I know you can't see those lines, right? So those curves there. This space right here is obviously too large to fit more than one of these. And so what I would do, we'll put this ruler here also as a little reference so you can see that that's the line. I can center it right between, just like that. And then there's gonna be a gap between these little circles and these circles here, or these curves here and these curves here. Now another idea that you couldn't do is I could have moved this 
right here. I could have done two things. I could have moved this a little bit away from the center back, kind of split up the gaps between these circles here. So this is about an inch and a half and an inch and a half. So what I could have done is maybe put this, you know, three quarters of an inch away from the center back or more like, <laughs> more like a, like a half inch or three eighths of an inch. And then it would have decreased this gap here as well and maybe just evenly distributed it. I'm not doing the math for you right now, but so if you have those two gaps there, what I would do is take those two gaps, include it with the two gaps that are gonna be on this side as well. And then I would divide that total. I would divide it by one, two, three, four, five. And then I would place them that distance away. And remember you have two here, so you would wanna put that equally apart. So there's that option. Um, and then the other option is um, I could have done this straight down the center like this, line this up right on my center back. And then that would have put my circles here. So I could have butted them up there like that. And then right here, put them right here like that. And then there's my one and a half inch line. And then we have this one here. I think I could have gotten almost perfect repeats all the way across my vest if I had put that on the center. So there's lots of options. Don't stress about this too much. I think the gaps between this are gonna be totally fine. This is the underarm. Um, it's not a high visible area. You're really gonna see them down the front and the center back is really where you wanna showcase the stitching. So in my opinion, I don't think you should sweat it as much as you might be. <laughs> um, just look at the options and follow the directions and just do this really simplest option that I'm doing if you start getting lost in the math. So that's my idea. All right, so I'm just gonna continue tracing mine. So like I said, your next one's gonna be at the center front here. And I know you have this curved princess line. You're just gonna do the best you can there. I'm just gonna line up that. I'm just kind of pulling this so it's nice and flat and lining up my curve right on to that center front line. And my center front really is straight. It's just the princess line distorting it a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna mark my stitch line. All right, and since I already have this all laid out, I'm gonna do this side here, and then I'll continue the other two pieces. So I'm gonna just find the amount here. Yeah, and it is about three inches, so I'm gonna put my ruler, I'm gonna line it up one and a half inches away from that curve there. Make this nice and flat the best I can. And we'll line this up on here. The other thing you could do, uh, cause I know like certain people visually are interested in different kinds of proportions and placements and things that what might be most calming to your eye is centering this little this little center part right on top of the side seam that might be less or just more appealing to you and less distracting than putting it equally spaced so i would just kind of pick your poison there <laughs> And I think right here, what I'm gonna do is kind of pivot this a little bit as I go. So right now I have this flat on this side and once I trace it, I'll flatten it for the other side. It has to be flat for the quilting. We really can't cheat on that part. All right, so now just repeat for your other side and then we're gonna attach our batting. All right, so we've cut out all our batting pieces and then we trimmed a half inch around the perimeter of all of these pieces. And that takes away the seam allowance because these pieces butt up against each other. They're not included in the seam, which would make the seam really bulky. Plus we still need to quilt it and we don't wanna be quilting over different thicknesses, right? So we want this to be as even as possible. I'm using a wool batting here called Dream Wool. This is a tw it was a twin size quilt. It provided a lot of batting and I 
am going to be using this little glue stick called Sew Line. I don't even think you can see the name of it. Um, this is what a lot of quilters use when they're gluing um, their their template to their fabric while they're stitching it. I'm not a quilter, but I have used it before in quilting. And it's also going to be, it's water soluble, so it's gonna go away once it's washed. So I'm just gonna apply that around um, in some strategic areas, just kind of on the perimeter to kind of secure the batting to the outer shell. And remember, this is to the wrong side. I'm gonna be pretty liberal at the side seam here because um, the side seam is pressed towards the back, so I can pretty much liberally put a lot of glue there. That will help. And make sure you move your fabric a little bit. Get it nice and flat. You don't want to pick this up and there be a big wrinkle in there. So, you know, check it out, you know, lift it up and go, okay, everything looks nice and smooth. Give it some tugs around the perimeter. You're trying to fill in these little spaces. I don't know if you can see that this is like lifted up and kind of overlapping and it's because it flares right here, right? So once I do that, it lays flat. Once I kind of give it a little tug. I'm just lining it up on the seam line there. I'm gonna pull this one down. So one of my tips, if you're using a batting that was really, really wrinkly when it came out of the package, because mine was, is once you've cut your pieces out or even before you cut your pieces out, I would hold your iron above it and steam it. So just press your steam button. Um, there might be other ways to do that, you know, just kind of steam it and kind of let it relax. It made my batting fluff up and it took the wrinkles out like instantly. It was actually really fun to watch. So I highly recommend you do that because you don't want a little wrinkle inside your, your vest. You'll see it from the outside and it'll also um, potentially be kind of a problem while you're stitching over it. And once I did that, I noticed that um, like this piece right here, it was a little longer than originally how I cut it out. And it's probably because those wrinkles, you know, made it a little longer. They were just wrinkles big enough to do that. So I just trimmed it up and made sure that it all matched. So I would take that step to make sure that everything is looking pretty flat and it's ready to go. All right, let's double check the other side and make sure we don't have any wrinkles. And it's looking pretty good. I think um, the only thing I need to do is glue the center front on this side here and we'll be ready to go. All right, so our last step in securing our batting is going to be to hand stitch these edges together so you have a nice continuous surface inside here and they don't pull apart. All right, so I've been whip stitching my batting together and this is my last little section. This actually went surprisingly really fast um, I'm using pretty big stitches and um, this is a little different angle that I've been doing it. So it's a little more awkward, but we're just trying to make this a nice seamless piece of batting on the inside. I'll just even that out right there. And let's take a look. So we've got all of our seams here, all whip stitched. And let's take a look on the outside. I'm just gonna give it a quick glance over. Everything looks pretty good. All right, next step. All right, so it's time to do the quilting. You wanna change your stitch length to about four millimeters. And we're gonna start at the center back for view B. For view A, you wanna follow the instructions in the order of the stitch lines. And we're gonna start from the top and go down on every pass for view B. So I've also rolled up my fronts here on either side and just kind of pinned them just so that they kind of stay a little bit more manageable. Uh, sometimes I even find, you know, rolling it up. You know, you don't want this to buckle too much. I didn't, I didn't use spray adhesive, so the whole thing isn't, at, um, you know, glued down. So I want to still respect that. So we're just gonna do this right side up and start from the top and work our way down. So um, see you on the other side. Quick tip, make sure you have a full bobbin. You don't want to run out of bobbin in these little areas here. All 
All right, so after doing a couple of passes, I think that the things I would, I've taken away from this is that you may end up getting, like I can see I'm getting a little bit of buck, buckling here. And um, I'm just gonna hope that the over wear, wearing and, and time that this will a little bit relax. Um, I accidentally hit my back tack button, which is right here. I can't even find it, so that's no big deal. I can also tell that these aren't perfectly symmetrical, but I am going a little fast. So if you want perfect symmetry, um, you're gonna have to probably slow down a little bit. Folding it up helps a lot to kind of stabilize it. Also lifting the presser foot occasionally and releasing the tension on the fabric. My outer fabric is very, very lightweight. So I think that that is also partly why I'm getting a little bit of this, little bit of buckling here. So those are my initial takeaways and we're just gonna keep going. So I feel like I'm getting better at this. And I think one thing that's really key is holding the fabric flat and pulling it apart. That really helps. You can see I'm actually holding my whole quilt in my hand over here. I don't know if you can see that because I don't want it flopping off the table. It is a lot to manage because it's all under the head of your machine. So fold it up and pin it and just manage this so it's a little easier just to grab onto and hold. Once you get to the armhole, the bottom of the armhole gets a lot easier. One more. So, um, you know, actually I'm gonna stop for a second here and I'm gonna pull these little stitches out. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna look at my center front and see how my stitching matches up to the other side. This might be a really good preventative tip. Maybe it's a little too extra, but let's just check it out because we don't really want our, our vest to not match at the center front, you know? And I'm just gonna look at where I see this stitching. I can see my line, sorry, I know you can't right, really. Maybe you can see that line right there. And just make sure that it's looking pretty much lined up. I think for the most part, it looks pretty good. We'll see. <laughs> that tip might be more useful for the folks doing the stripes. You know, you want your center fronts to match. All right, we did it. One of my other tips for sewing curves of any kind is the less you stop, the more smooth the curve will be. So you can tell that I had to stop and kind of adjust my presser foot and everything, but I don't think I got any sharp angles. Like that one's a little bit sharp right here. Um, I don't know if you can see that. It's not as smooth as it could be. If I ran out of bobbin thread, or maybe I had a boo-boo somewhere, maybe a little tuck or something. If you get a little tuck in your stitches, I highly recommend before you panic, like rubbing it, scratching it, and trying to distribute the fabric inside the tuck. If the, if the needle doesn't pierce the fold of the fabric and the fold is inside between the two stitches, you can most likely kind of scratch it out and get it to relax, iron it, relax it, and it'll probably be fine. So don't panic yet. If you, um, like I said, if you um, your bobbin ran out or you do need to fix something and you don't wanna have a back stitch in the middle, um, one of my tips is, um, I'll show you really quick, is when you stitch, don't back stitch when you start again. Go to the back side and put, tug that little thread, your bobbin thread, and then pick up the loop here 
and pull that thread to the back. Now make sure you also leave long tails on wherever you're trying to kind of patch together and then tie hand tie those off those little long tails right there and then start your sewing again and it'll look seamless you won't have any back tacks so that's one of my little tips uh, last little note I just wanted you to know that quilting took me about 15 17 minutes somewhere in there so um, I know you saw a time lapse and, lapse and it sped up I just thought I'd let you know what to expect so um, you can plan your sewing time all right we are on to the welt don't be intimidated, this is gonna be easy peasy. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prep our welt here and you're going to take your one piece of batting and trim a half inch around the perimeter and then slice it down the middle and then line it up to the fold of this welt here. So I folded mine in half, made a crease, lined this up to that crease there and you can baste it or t glue it. And then you're gonna need your pocket piece five and six and your quilt your quilted vest here and right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew our welt together here so we're going to turn this right sides together so fold it and we're going to show sew the short ends here at a half inch seam allowance and you can include a tiny bit of your batting in there if it if it reaches All right, and then we're gonna trim these corners here and we're gonna turn it right side out. Now, when you sew your sides there, this is one area where you really do wanna make sure you're fairly accurate because it has to fit into the hole of the welt opening. So we don't really want it to be bigger or smaller. Either way can be a little bit troublesome. So let's turn this right side out and make sure everything's nice and flat in there. Your seam allowance may want to flip on one side of the batting or not. You can see my batting got a little crumpled in there, so I'm just poking it into the corner there. Same with this side here. And then we're gonna baste it along the bottom edge here inside the seam allowance. And let's make sure our corner is fairly crisp. It looks pretty good. And we'll repeat with the other side. All right, so we have our welts. When you go to mark this opening here on your front, you can see, probably see mine really faintly. I just used that, that plastic tool that I've been using. I am a big fan of this not being a really dominant marking. So don't go overboard on this area here because you are, it's really hard to line up two pieces of fabric perfectly over those rectangles. So just give yourself some guides here and then you can put your pocket on there. You want them to be symmetrical left to right, but you also don't want to have to um, agonize over the placement of this. So just make sure that you know, like the corners are enough or something like that. You can thread trace if you want. So, all right, so we have our pocket opening here. And then my other really important tip is on your lining piece and you can see I cut out the square and that's how I line things I might find it a lot easier mark this square I just used a washable ink on the wrong side because we're going to be sewing this right sides together like this you're going to be seeing this square so mark it on the wrong side it'll save yourself a lot of headache uh, and if you've already marked it on here and now you have to mark it on this side, maybe they don't line up. Make sure it's all washable. And it's the same reason why I say don't sweat too much over this because you might not get this perfectly on there no matter how hard you try and you don't want your mark to show. So that's why I say just kind of relax about it. All right, so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our welt to this pocket opening. I've sewn a lot of welts and a lot of different pocket styles. Um, and my biggest tip when you're doing this style is we're gonna first baste this to the bottom of the welt and we're gonna put the seam allowance into this rectangular opening by a half inch, which is the seam allowance, right? We're gonna baste it in there. Don't baste it on that line right there. Baste it kind of just barely inside the rectangle of there, right? The other really huge tip is when we do the perimeter with the pocket lining on top, and I'm gonna repeat this, make sure that you don't catch the ends here of 
this welt. And I'll be more clear about that when we go to do it. All right, so right now we're just gonna base this inside here and your quilting might be drawing all this up. So make sure it's nice and flat because this opening needs to be big enough for this. All right, so we're just gonna line this up and I'm lining the raw edge one half inch past the line of my opening there. And I'm just gonna sew it just inside that line, inside the rectangle. Just like that. And we'll do the other side. And make sure you trim any threads here. You don't want these poking out the seam. All right, so now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our pockets here and we're gonna line up this box on top of this other one here. And what I like to do is I just take my pin through the corner here, and then I take it to the one on the vest there, and I'm just gonna poke it through just like that. And I'm gonna do this in a few spots to try and locate the exact spot. Don't just do two, you need at least three to kind of triangulate it. All right, and so this is what I'm talking about. This little corner here and this little corner here, you need that corner off of this welt. If you come down this side and catch any of this little seam allowance here and um, or it down here, you're gonna have to take it apart. And removing any stitches when you're doing welts is really the worst part of doing a welt because it's never quite the same again. So this is why I say, let's set you up for success. Find your corners and pin off of the welt. Just go right outside of it. We're gonna pivot when we turn off of the welt. And remember that we put that stitching for the welt um, just, um, just on the inside of the rectangle. So this little corner may be lower than your stitching and that's great. All right, so we'll just put a couple of pins here, just like this. Now I want you to decrease your stitch length a little bit because the tighter the stitches, the crisper your corners will be. If your stitches are too long, your corners may look a little wobbly and they may collapse on themselves. And the other thing is don't start in the corner. Never start in the corner because you don't want to back stitch there and you may um, just go an extra stitch. Always start in the middle. It's a little easier to kind of get your sewing legs under you while you're going. And you know, remember, we, I can feel my stitching on the welt there where I basted it to the, the jacket. So just trust that you've got all of this lined up and it's gonna be okay, all right? Now, if you wanna check anything, we'll do this. We're gonna make, we're gonna put this pin like this and like this parallel to this little, this line right here. I'm gonna lift it up. I'm gonna fold it along that line and we can kind of tell, here we can even do this will lay our ruler right here and I, that's on the blue line I drew and we'll go like this and go okay look if I stitch right there I don't see any of my basting stitch my welt looks even and parallel so these are just things to reassure you so if you're really confident when we go to sew because I don't want you to not feel confident and you're, you know like look at that it's nice and parallel this side isn't narrower than this side we are ready to go all right so we're going to start like I said, in the middle of one of these long sides. I'll backstitch when I finish. You can backstitch now too, that's fine. And you're just gonna head to that corner and we're gonna pivot in that corner. Now, when we get to that corner, make sure your needle is off of the welt in there. All right, you can, you'll be able to feel it. And now go up and I'm also gonna make sure, I'm gonna kind of reach under there and push the seam allowance of the welt away I don't want it to catch. If, I, if it catches, you'll be able to see it on the right side because it's gonna poke out right here, okay? So just make sure that you press that seam allowance, just push it with your finger away. All right, now we're gonna turn this corner as well. And take the pins out as I go. And remember, your, your quilted vest is probably like scrunching up a little bit. So just try and keep it all nice and flat. On a smaller welt, like one that's um, like smaller this way, I usually count the number of stitches on each side there. But on this one's pretty large, so you don't really have to do that. All right, now we're coming down this side, and remember, we don't want this little seam allowance right here 
to squeak out into the right side of the vest. So just push it over a little bit out of the way. And then when we pivot, we are still off of that welt. And then when we pivot, we go onto the welt. And then we are approaching our starting point there and then you can backstitch. There we go, just like that. I know, it's very scary and it's a little mysterious, but it's all gonna be fine, all right? And that's what it looks like on this side. And like you can see, my stitching is below the basting, except right there, I can already tell, right there, my basting is kind of sneaking out of there. So let's investigate. And I can, I can see it right there. So what that tells me right now is that I either need to make sure that my welt is gonna be the same width going along here, or I need to remove the stitches right now. Maybe they got wiggly. And, and in my opinion, this does look a little bit wider right there. So let's just look. And I, I would remove stitches right now before I've cut the welt. But when you cut the, after you cut the welt, that's when it gets really hard and your fabric gets really tired, especially around these corners. And so I'm just gonna unpick a few stitches around this corner and fix it. So let's lift it up here. And I'm just gonna push this well, and it's maybe it's because I was pushing the seam allowance and it kind of made it collapse a little bit. So we're gonna pull this over here and try again. Let's look on this side here. We can get rid of this thread. We wanna get rid of that thread right there because we don't wanna immortalize it on the right side. All right, and so now I'm just making sure that I'm not uh, stitching on the inside of the pre-stitched area. I'm stitching just on top of it or right next to it. And I'm gonna use my awl and kind of push the welt up into the opening there. Make sure I don't catch it. And now pivot. All right, let's see. Okay, this time I did catch my basting stitch in there. Now, another little thing you can do is measure. Okay, how, how uh, square is this? I mean, that side looks a little wider than this side to me. So maybe I would make this the same width. No matter what you do, there's always something that will make it a little bit uneven, right? So let's see, this is right down here. So I, I might just make that a little bit wider. I know I'm kind of going over this a lot, but really I'm just trying to give you some context into what you're looking at, what you're expecting, what you're allowed to change, what, you know, what gets hard to change. Now is the time to fix all of this right now. And just be honest about it. It's okay if it's a little bit off, we can fix it. All right, so I just made that slightly wider and now I'm kneading the stitching just like that. And so now my rectangle is the same width here as it is there and it looks more like a rectangle. So now this is ready to cut. All right, so we're gonna put our scissors in there and I'm just gonna make a big snip right down the middle, just like that. And then I'm gonna keep using these actually. I'm gonna cut right up to about a half inch away from this short leg right here. I'm gonna zoom the camera in a little bit. Okay, we're nice and zoomed in here. So I made this cut right here inside my box. You can see it better maybe on this side here and we can even cut it on this side, that's fine. So I'm gonna cut this. Now try not to cut the seam allowance of just the well, it just makes it kind of awkward and messy in there. So I'm gonna cut up to this corner here. And then what I mean by that is this little seam allowance right here of your welt, try not to cut that. Just lift up this layer here, cut into your corner. And same with this one too. Go right up into that corner. Trying not to grab the seam allowance of the welt. It kind of wants to grab my scissors. This side, I can cut all layers on this side. And then um, we'll flip it over here. And you can see I haven't cut the lining of this corner here. See that? Let's see. <laughs> see that right there? So now I'm just going to pick up just the lining layer so I don't get the seam allowance of the welt. All right, and same with this side here, like that. And then now you're gonna go back and look like, okay, am I really in that corner? 
Let's just take a look. And on this side, we can always clip it a little further after this next step, but um, after this next one, we really can't adjust it. So now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna poke this all through the hole, just like this. Pull the lining all the way through. And we're gonna go to the iron and we're gonna press this. but we're gonna give it a little tug right now. So I like to just kind of give us a little tug like this and look. Now you can you might have a tiny little pucker there. That's very manageable. If you're feeling like, oh, I'm not getting a crisp corner at all, now is the time to get back in here and clip into that corner a little bit. Don't be too shy about that, but you don't also need to go all the way up to the thread, especially if you're using a fabric that is a little looser woven, like any linens or things like that. Linens tend to be looser and their fibers might poke out the corners. So you gotta be careful. All right, so this looks all ready to press now. So let's go over to the iron and we'll press that. All right, so I'm not sure how much the wool can take the steam in pressing. So I'm just gonna pr protect a little bit the wool batting. And we're just gonna Press that in there, best I can. It's a little harder on a quilted vest. Can pull this triangle a little bit. We're still trying to maintain the integrity of a rectangle too. And I know, I know we're, we're eager to see the other side and we will in just a second. All right, so now let's flip it over. All right, and this is looking pretty good. That looks pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna grab our lower pocket piece, which was cut in the main shell, and we're going to sew it to our lining here. And what I'm gonna recommend is that you kind of flip this over like this, and we're gonna sew around the perimeter from the lining side like this. And then this way, what we can do is make sure that we're lined up to the edge there and that we catch the lining all the way around the welt. Now you don't wanna catch this welt, right? It should be far enough away from your seam allowance here. So we'll just line up this corner. It's gonna be a little fussy. All right, now I have my machine in there. I'm gonna use it like a helping hand here. Line up the rest of my pocket. Pull this. And I don't want this end here to get kind of wobbly. I want it to stay nice and parallel to this cut edge. So we're gonna make sure that stays true. Let's see, maybe we wanna... So now I'm gonna push the triangle towards the raw edge now. And we're gonna sew right through it. Don't catch the welt though. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not catching the welt. Pull it out of the way there. I just reached inside. All right, that's a, that's a little bit of a hard part. Now you can go around and take a little breather. <laughs> all right, and like I said, you're gonna just manage all of this here. And see, look, that's the side we just did. It's nice and secure. You might see your lining there, that's fine, but the welt's gonna cover it up. All right, so here we are. Turning this corner here. And again, it's a lot of vest to manage, I know. Let's get this all up here, and now we're going to line up this corner to this corner here. Fold the vest out of the way. And get a little closer and fuss with it a little more. So now here we are. And so I'm gonna pull the vest here down to, so that I can get a nice straight edge right here at the end. See this right, this end right here where the triangle is, line up this corner here, just like this. Again, we don't want this welt to get caught, so push it out of the way. 
And then when I see that corner there, I'm gonna use my awl to pull the corner of the rectangle a little bit over. Hopefully you can see that okay. I know it's pretty hard, hard to see there, but we're talking about this bottom corner that I just approached. And we're gonna sew right on that edge, that right on the seam that we've already sewn. And now when I get to the top corner, I, right now I'm pulling this and it's distorting the top of the pocket. Like the top of the pocket is not parallel to the top edge. So that's okay, we're gonna fix that. We just want to focus on one side at a time. So once I'm going to pull, take my awl and kind of pull it toward me a little bit to make sure I get this corner nice and straight. All right, and then when I'm ready to pivot, we're going to again, I leave the needle down, lift up the presser foot, and now I'm just arranging the vest so now I can line up this edge here. So see now this is flat, then all these raw edges are behaving. And again, I'm gonna kind of pull this a little bit, make sure it's nice and straight. And I'm just stitching on that original line, not the welt though. The welt can be close to that top edge, so make sure you don't stitch it, because you'll stitch your pocket shut. All right, and so make sure my welt's out of the way there. What you're hoping here is that you really maintain the rectangular nature of this pocket too. You don't want to distort it. So keep all your pocket edges lined up, the perimeter, this right here, lined up. And then basically you have a half inch seam allowance. So we're just keeping it. All right, let's see how it went. All right, so that's what my welt's looking like right there. And the next step is hand stitching your welt down here. And you can see like my welt is a little bit open right here. It is stitched down, see, like that. If you're having that kind of problem, it looks it looks a little bit like it's curved. You can straighten it out a little bit, but you can't distort your vest too much. So just make sure that when you go to try and straighten this out, that you're being really honest. You may need to unstitch this piece right here and pull it up a little bit or let it down. It just depends on what's going on there. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty nice, generous opening there. And once we stitch it shut, you don't want to be able to see that seam. So try and get that straighter. All right, so I just removed my stitches just right here. And now I let it relax. See, look at that. I kind of get it to close just so that I don't have that gap right there. You might have a little bit, but that's okay. Um, and then now I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to pick up my vest and I'm going to hold that seam allowance there right in place. And then that way now I know that I have a better shot of it all lining up and then not being too big. All right, so let's stitch that again. Don't catch your welt. <laughs> let's make sure I'm not catching mine. All right, so let's see if it looks a little bit more lined up. And that does, that looks a lot better. All right, and so now what this needs is a few hand stitches to secure the welt. And we'll do our other side and I'll stay zoomed in and do the whole thing again for you. All right, my vest is upside down and I have my welt here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to tack it to the bottom there. We're just gonna baste it to the bottom opening there. So make sure that it is a half inch inside the rectangle here. It's like that. Remember, you're gonna have to probably um, smooth out your batting and um, your vest because it's all quilted and kind of crumpling. I'm even looking at the parallel line between the traced off pocket opening I have here and this raw edge. Just anything that kind of gives you a reference to make sure things are all staying undistorted and rectangular, right? Anything that'll make you feel better. All right, so we're gonna do it just inside that rectangle. All right, we have our pocket with the traced square on there and now we're going to pin corner to corner, just poke it all the way in there. Don't, don't pin pin, just use it as kind of a pole or a post. And remember to pin, don't touch the welt there. And same with this last corner, don't pin through that welt. Peeling it back and making sure, there we go. All right, and now we're going to we make sure all these pins are all the way in there. Now we can pin it in place. 
and pull this one out here, just like that. Okay, and I always start at a long, nice long side, not in the corner, shorter stitch length. And remember when you pivot, don't sew on the welt at all. You never sew on the welt once you get past this long straight edge here. So when you pivot, be off of the welt and make sure you don't sew it right now either. Push it out of the way. And you want a nice parallel line, right? So we're thinking about the size of our rectangle. Down to that corner. I'm gonna feel for my welt there. See like whereabouts is that welt, uh, you know, to my blue line? Is it just inside it? Is it just on it? Is it just past it? And so I, I pivoted about the same point. And again, I'm gonna make sure that I push that welt out of the way, the little seam allowance of it. And then once we pivot, we're onto the welt again. When you turn the corner and you meet your starting point, if you're to the left or right of it, you need to examine that right away. Don't keep going because it'll just cause you a little bit of problem. You can't just kind of taper it. You may have wider or narrower, something like that. All right, let's check it out. This time I'm well away from that basting line. I learned my lesson from the previous time and now we're ready to cut. That looks like a pretty good rectangle. A little wiggly right there, but that could also be an optical illusion with the batting. Looks pretty good. All right, let's cut. So like I said, I always cut in the middle like this and kind of get a good cut started. We don't want to cut anything but the pocket. So, you know, see, I just have this peeled away. So I'm gonna cut straight down. And now when I get to the corner on the sides that have the welt right here, I pick up the layer and cut to the corner that way I don't cut the welt. And my basting stitch is a little bit high right there. You can see that. So I may have to take out a little bit of it just so I can get into the corner. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy. I'll just pull out a few stitches of it. Like that. You can, you can poke through, make sure I don't cut anything. You can cut through all layers on these top corners here. And then again, peel up this layer here and don't cut the welt. Into that corner. All right. And then we'll flip it over and we'll look at our lining. That corner looks pretty good. That corner looks pretty good. And then now we just need to pick up this layer up into that corner there, just like that. All right, so now we're going to flip it all into the inside here. And like I said, I always kind of pull these corners like this, make sure that everything looks good. Be gentle if you're doing a, like a really loosely woven thing. All right, and now we're gonna go press this. Okay, pull that welt like this. Make sure that seam allowance is nice and taut. And these corners as well. So I'm just making sure everything looks pretty good, that the corners are okay. There's no threads poking out of them. It looks pretty square. And I'm just getting rid of a little bit of these tucks now from they're just wrinkles from me pressing the other side just so they're not a problem later. And then now we're ready to sew the pocket lining on. All right, and you can see on this one, I love pointing out my mistakes to you. <laughs> you can see on this welt right here, you see how the seam is coming forward a little bit. So that's something that you need to pay attention to when you're attaching your welt, that you've really got that edge there perfectly on the end. I'm gonna be able to cover that up with some hand sewing, but just so you know, that's what's going on there. All right, so now we're gonna flip this over, put our self piece here. 
I'm just going to line it up, you know, kind of roughly like that. It'll stick to itself. And now, like I said, I like to do it from this side. And we're going to peel up the vest just like this and line up those raw edges like that. So I look at it as a straight line and we're just sewing a box right here, but we're making sure that we're keeping that rectangle a rectangle. So this is that short end that I've already sewn right here. So we're just making sure we wouldn't want to pull too much and then we'd get like this arch right here, right? So we're just making this nice and straight. So I'm going to start, I start right here above the pocket opening right here. So I'm starting like right here. I know I told you would never start in the corner. I'm starting above the corner. I'm not even back stitching. All right, so I'm making sure that that looks straight. And I need to kind of move over a little bit. So I'm gonna move my stitching over. Okay, there we go. Now we're kind of lined up with that. I'm gonna go just to that left of that stitching the best I can. The reason we're going to just to the left of it we don't want to cut to catch our welt. Don't forget that. Um, the reason we're going just to the left of it is so that um, we don't see our lining from the right side. But that these ends are going to be hand stitched, so you're going to be okay either way. Don't sweat that too much. All right. Now we're going to go all the way around. A nice little breather. And remember that, like you, you're going to be hand sewing the welts at the end. You really don't have to be that accurate on the ends. It'll just make the pocket a little bit more stable if you're stitching right along that seam. But if you're a little nervous, just stay in the seam allowance. It'll be fine. All right, so now here we are. We're to this other straight edge. And so I'm just folding the welt so they get a nice straight seam right here, parallel to that edge there. And we're gonna pull this up a little bit. Get closer. All right, now get that nice straight. Don't catch your welt. I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna pull mine out of the way there. All right, and then find your pivot point. I'm gonna go just like right off the triangle and now I'm gonna leave my needle down and I'm gonna pivot. And then this time I'm gonna kind of look at the inside here and see, see I'm, I'm getting that gap right there. So let's try and make sure we don't get that. So I'm gonna gently push that seam down towards the welt there. That's the top welt right here. And just let it relax. I'm not forcing it. I'm just letting it relax, kind of pushing it. I'm going to hold it really firm. Grab that seam allowance so it stays right where I want it. Start sewing a little bit. And get it right past that seam best I can. Don't let your vest pull on your sewing. All right. There we go. Let's see how I did this time. <laughs> oh, I think that looks better than the other one did right out the gate. So now all we have left are the hand stitches on the side there and a little bit of pressing. You can see some wrinkles right there. Those wrinkles are because the fabric is so bulky. And the other thing that why you get these wrinkles here is because remember what's happening under here. There's a triangle of fabric right here, right? A triangle here. So what you're looking at right there, you see there's the triangle on the end and then there's that lower seam allowance. So there's this big divot right here where there's no fabric plumping it up. And that's why you get those little wrinkles. And so sometimes what's better to do is put something in here like a press cloth and then press this and then it'll stay nice and you won't get those wrinkles. Those wrinkles are just from the fabric kind of like slouching down. All right, next we're gonna sew the shoulders. We're making a vest now. All right, so let's line up our shoulders here. So at your seam allowance. And we're gonna press our seams open we use the iron as well. All right, it's time for the collar. So I have lightly glued my batting here to the under collar piece. And now we're gonna put this right sides together. And we're gonna sew around the short ends and the top curved, interior curve. 
at our seam allowance. All right, we're gonna sew half inch seam. Pivot. And I'm gonna follow the cashmerette tip and try and catch a tiny bit of my batting here in the top edge so that it doesn't crumple with wear. And keep this lined up here still. All right, we're gonna trim down to a quarter of an inch and around your corners. All right, we're gonna turn it right side out. I always just put my thumb, thumb in there and then I hold the seam allowance and push it one way. And when I poke it out, I get a pretty good start to having a nice corner. If the seam allowance is a little messy in there, sometimes it prevents that corner from turning nicely. And I'm gonna make sure the seam allowance is playing nice with my batting in here too. I'm gonna clip this curve right here on the top. Probably could have done that before I turned it, but now I see that it needs it a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna try and lightly press this so I don't mash my batting down too much. And then we'll get this to meet our neck edge there. Just like this. Have to pull that to meet that raw edge. And then I'm gonna press this edge one more time. I'm not pushing down, but I'm definitely touching the fabric and using the steam. So kind of hovering, but I'm still touching it and pushing it, kind of tapping it a little bit. Just like that. And now we have our collar. Let's press the side just a little less or a little more, I mean. All right, so now we're gonna put it right side to the vest and we're gonna first pin it in some landmark spots. I clipped the center of my neck on my body and on my neck band. So we can put a pin there. And then this is gonna go all the way up to the edge about a half inch away from the center front cut edge there. And then this notch is gonna to go to the shoulder. Remember your shoulder seam is pressed open. It may feel like it's gonna be hard to fit and it's just because it's a curve going to another curve. You have to be really precise when sewing things like this because you're sewing on the seam line and that's what measured to match. And so if you're at all to the left or to the right of your seam, you're changing the length of the seam on the pieces and they just they just won't fit. So you just gotta make sure that you stay true to the seam allowance in something like this when there's curves involved. We all know how necks and collars can be. Good thing we stay stitched it too. All right, all right, so now we're gonna baste this. Keep all three raw edges lined up together. I'm gonna go just under a half inch seam allowance. And so you can tell like I didn't pin between these two curves and it definitely looks like it's not gonna work. It will, <laughs> um, but I like to keep them separate and because this one's a little different curve than the other one, right? And so I just kind of hold it up and place it on that there, keeping all those raw edges. Make sure you have three raw edges. You don't wanna miss one. Make sure that seam stays pressed open so I have to push that seam allowance there. And we're gonna take out these pins. And we'll continue on down the whole neck. And I'm always taking the body and keeping it kind of perpendicular to the collar edge. That will help line it up. We're stitching really close to the seam line. Um, or right on it if you want. All right, so now we have our collar. It's looking like a vest. Time for the lining. Just a few more steps. We're gonna start with the lining now. We're gonna take the front and the side front. We're gonna sew those together with the princess line, just like we did on the outer shell. 
All right, we're gonna put this right sides together. You're gonna match your notches. You can pin or clip, whatever is easiest for you. You wanna match, you wanna line it up on the half inch seam line though. Don't line up just the raw edge here at the top. Line it up on the seam line. Okay, we'll repeat for the other side. And when you press this seam, I want you to press this one towards the side front, the opposite way we pressed it to the shell. All right, so we're gonna press the seams here to the side front. All right, we're ready to sew our side seams here. Line them up on the seam line. So now we're gonna press the side seams and we're gonna press them towards the front, not the back like we did on the shell. All right, this next step, don't skip this. You wanna trim around the perimeter of this entire lining assemble, except for the shoulders. And just trim like an eighth of an inch. That way when we sew it to the outer shell, it's gonna to pull to the inside and your lining won't sneak out and be visible from the right side. So I'm gonna use a rotary mat and a rotary knife. You can use scissors, whatever you like. All right, so I'm gonna redo all my back text. Just make sure that I didn't lose any. And that should just be the side seams, top and bottom, and the bottom of the princess lines. Those are the only places we trimmed. All right, we're ready to sew the shoulders. Remember to line it up on the seam line at the junctures of your neck and armhole. And we're gonna press these seams open. All right, it's time to attach our lining to the vest. It's gonna be very easy to do. So I'm gonna do this with the vest facing me, facing up, and the lining face down, but we're gonna do this right sides together. And the reason I'm gonna do that is, one, so that my batting doesn't get caught on the feed dogs, but also so I can see my original neck seam where I attached the collar, and I can make sure that I can stitch just to the left of that seam and it won't show on the right side. So we're gonna pin this right sides together around the entire perimeter, and um, your neck, band here, your collar, it might be a little finicky here because we haven't clipped this neckline so it's still trying to kind of uh, like fold into the garment. So just line this up and do the best you can. It's just like when we attached it, it's gonna be kind of the same thing. It'll be a little easier this time because it's already sewn down, but it will try and sag down into the seam. So just be really careful about that. Um, I noticed that I had some almost tucks in my neck band and it's because you know we have this batting in there making it really fluffy and it's not very compressed and so the fabric is a little loose so just make sure you watch for those too. If yours is really thick you might use clips or something similar it makes it a little easier. You can also note that I have a lot of batting in this seam I'm just realizing so obviously this didn't get trimmed down as much as I thought. Probably when I ironed it it got a little bit taller so you might watch for that as well. 
I don't think that'll impact it negatively or anything, but yours may not look like that. All right, so just doing all the landmarks, corners, seams, notches, anything that is what I like to call non-negotiable. We're about to enclose everything in here, so make sure your pockets are done. If you haven't hand sewn the welts, that's fine. And then remember how we are offset our seams from the ironing, so just make sure they stay that way. It'll reduce the bulk at the seam. All right, our whole perimeter is pinned. Now when you go to sew this, it's, it, you do not have to catch the batting in this edge because one of our steps is going to top stitch around the perimeter and that will catch the batting. So don't worry that if your batting is still loose, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to use your half inch seam allowance and the batting was supposed to go up to that seam. So that is the way it's supposed to be. All right, so I'm gonna start here and do my collar last. Just kind of get it a little bit all together. Um, it'll be easier to handle if um, this is all sewn when I get to that tricky part. All right, so we're gonna start here at the center front and go down. And you're just making sure you don't have any tucks or anything weird happening and uh, your seams are lined up and that's about it. This is, should be a pretty straightforward step. I'm trying to pull my batting out from the seam here. Mainly because I just don't want it to turn back and create bulk. So one thing to really pay attention to on this step, the thing that you want to watch for when you're all when all is said and done is that your center fronts are gonna match and be the exact same length as one another. So I'm just gonna sew around the perimeter following my seam allowance, but then I'm gonna check it before I turn it right side out. But if you wanna think about that as you're sewing, that's probably a good thing to kind of keep in mind. All right, we're heading up to the neckline here and you really wanna try and aim for that needle going right alongside where the collar is sewn to the neckline right now. I just saw a little tuck I thought, but nope, there's no tuck there. Kinda wish my batting wasn't here, so I'm gonna trim away a little bit. I'm just feeling for where the collar hits the neckline. And I'm gonna pivot right before the stitching attaching the collar to the neckline. And I'm gonna stay just to the left of my stitching where I attach the collar so that that seam doesn't show on the right side of the garment. And now my hand is underneath kind of pulling the lining and smoothing it out right here just so that there's nothing folding into the seam here. Like I said, this is gonna be like you're attaching the collar again, but with a lot more vest to contend with. So you may get some tucks because the collar is so poofy and that's okay. We'll fix those afterward. But try not to get any because it is a little bit more, um, it'll be a little bit more work to get rid of those tucks because it's a little harder to tell until we turn our vest. <laughs> If you want to tr clip your neckline first, you can. Uh, I don't recommend it because it's really hard to sew a seam that's already been clipped. And you might just trade one struggle for another struggle. It's kind of how sewing is, right? Pick your struggle. I'm just keeping it smooth with this hand here. I'm just feeling hoping that I don't have any tucks, making sure my lining is reaching the edge because you want all these raw edges lined up. You don't want one to fall short, like the lining is the only loose one right now. All 
All right, and let's just make sure that where I started, I was just next to that collar as well there. And now we're gonna inspect it and see if we have any tucks that we need to deal with. We're gonna check our lengths, center front, center front like this, and make sure that they're the same. And we're, we're comparing the seam line, not, not the overall length, just the seam line. And if you have to adjust something, I would adjust it at the bottom. All right. All right, so I've checked my fronts and they look pretty good. And then I reached inside here and I kind of peeled back the collar. I looked at the lining and the outer shell. Look at both sides of the collar and make sure that whole seam looks good to you before you clip this next part because we're gonna clip the curve of the neckline here and then we're going to clip the corners on the vest and then that way we're ready to turn. So we're just gonna trim this here, the corner, and then we're gonna clip the neckline. All right, so this, I have a little jog right here. I'm gonna fix that right now. It's gonna sew that closer to the collar. I'll put the lining side up and I can feel the collar's right there. I'm going to just sew right along that collar with the lining side up this time so I can feel it a little better and blend it in with my center front. Nope, let's try that. Clip it a little bit closer. Yeah, that is definitely more tolerable. All right, so now we're gonna press this perimeter here and just make sure that everything's looking good before we go any further. So I'm just looking for threads and any tucks or anything like that that looks fishy. All right, and we're gonna just press this and slightly push the lining to the inside of the garment. Remember, we trimmed off that eighth of an inch, so it's kind of expecting that anyway. All right, so we're gonna secure our armholes now. So we're going to baste the edge here. So make sure that this is nice and flat and your seams are lined up. Remember, we offset our thicknesses. So line up your seams there. And we're gonna do both armholes. So how I recommend doing circles like this is I want you to pick up your vest and flip it over and then sew around this circle like this, you won't get stuck. Um, if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> Sometimes you sew these circles and you have to stop sewing, pick up, rearrange your whole garment around the head of the machine and then keep going because you have can't go any further. You can't sew in the whole circle. So if you do it this way, you won't have to stop. I'm trying not to distort any of this. Like I'm trying to keep the whole garment like flat right here. I'm pulling it like this and making sure I'm not pulling this armhole any other place than, you know, just right on top of itself. You can line up your notches, um, your seams, all that good stuff. And I'm just sewing at a quarter of an inch just to secure it all. You can see like, see I'm letting the jacket lay flat. This is the back right here. And this is how I kind of get it to the, I'm looking at the lining here. I know you can still only see the front, but I'm just kind of making sure that this is laying nice and flat. I'm not distorting it, keeping those raw edges together. And, you know, I'm thinking about how the lining down here, you know, we want it to be pushed this way rather than sagging down, right? I remember we trimmed that eighth of an inch off of the armhole too. All right, now we're gonna top stitch the perimeter hem. We only have a couple steps left and you're gonna to wanna to do a one inch parallel line here. So if you wanna mark it in some way to give yourself a guide, I'm gonna do my marking right here at the corner. So I'm just going to draw it in here so that when I pivot, I get a nice um, corner here 
and it's symmetrical to my, you know, my other side. So that's the only marking I think I'm going to give myself. And I'll keep my ruler handy, but I do have a one inch mark on my throat plate to use as a guide. So we're going to start with the jacket right side up and we're going to start in the right front. And we're going to start right up here at the top of the collar. And I'm going to put, line up this edge here on the one inch mark of my throat plate. And if you don't have that, put, use a piece of washi tape or tape or something like that. Um, and that you can just use that as a line. And I su suggest making it longer rather than shorter so that you don't get it wiggly at all. Oh, and then, and, and also um, increase your stitch length to what you used for your quilting. Try and keep everything nice and flat and relaxed. This is gonna go kind of quickly because of this long stitch length and it can kind of get away from you really quickly. So that's why you wanna make sure everything's kind of in order. We spent a lot of time pressing it. So it's pretty well behaved right now. Um, you just wanna make sure that this isn't the time things go awry. And you don't want any like drag lines across this front. You might get a little bit and hopefully when we put the snaps on that will kind of calm that down or disguise it. So if you have that starting to happen where the pressure of your presser foot is pushing this fabric towards you while the feed dogs are pulling the lining away from you, you get that kind of diagonal line thing going across this little placket we're creating, right? So what I do to combat that is I'm always pushing my fabric like this. And you can see I get this little bump of fabric right here. And that is what I'm trying to combat right now. So I'm, what I'm trying to do is feed the fabric evenly with how it's being fed from the bottom. And I will lift up my presser foot, relax it a little bit, and I kind of hold it tight. I even will hold from behind and in front and hold it taut and then sew, and that will help as well. And just constantly pick it up and let it relax because you don't want to get down here and it blump off the edge or get a tuck, you know, right across your, your placket. My fabric's pretty thin, so it really wants to create these drag lines. All right, and there's my pivot point. You can kind of see it was trying. We didn't let it. <laughs> and I'm also gonna reach under here and pull the lining like this away from the bottom edge. Just kind of pick it up. You can see it kind of curls under right here. It's kind of what I want to happen because I don't want the lining to sneak out from underneath. And this is our last chance. We didn't understitch our lining, right? We don't really need to as long as we're stitching this. And again, I'm kind of concerned about torquing. It won't be as bad. Um, for some reason, going across fabric, you don't get the torquing like you do when you're going down the length grain. You can see my lining a tiny bit, so I'm pulling on it, just making sure you know, I don't want tucks. I don't want it to sneak out. And I keep rearranging my vest so that nothing's pulling on it. You don't want it hanging off your sewing table and then um, pulling against the needle. It's a big garment now and it can do that. All right, again, we don't want torque lines and because we went from the top down on one side and we're going from the bottom up. That's when you get that little bit of a risk where you can kind of distort things going the other direction. So you have to be careful. Look at that little tuck that wants to start, partly because the quilting is being drawn up here and it's loose right there. So we're gonna try and finesse that in there. Just one stitch at a time. And I'm sliding the fabric, one stitch, just like that, get past it. Top stitching is definitely not my strong suit. I tend to be a little too careless or speedy when I do this kind of thing. I love it, but I don't spend enough time on it. All right, here we are at the top. All right, time for the binding. Don't be nervous. This isn't like traditional binding. This is gonna be a lot easier. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cinch up the armhole just a little bit. So we're gonna put a gathering stitch between the notches right here at the top. Uh, about three-eighths of an inch in. All right, put that three-eighths of an inch in. And 
And we're just gonna go to those two upper notches. Leave yourself a tail. And we'll do this on both armholes. And this is at the top of the armhole. Tail's long enough. All right, and we're gonna pull this, gather it up just a little bit. It's gonna shape the armhole a little bit. Kind of hug the arm. Just like that. And to the other side. All right, so we have a little bit of gathering in there. See that? All right, and now with your binding pieces, we're gonna sew each one into a circle. So put this right sides together, sew across the short end at a half inch. All right, we're gonna go press this. All right, we're gonna press the seam open and then we're going to fold it in half wrong sides together and press it in half. All right, so now we're gonna sew this right sides together the armhole. We're gonna match the seam to the underarm here. And remember how I said we wanna kind of pick up the vest like this anytime we're sewing circles. If you have a free arm machine and your armhole can go around the bed of your machine, you don't have to listen to me say these things. But if you don't, you want to make sure that you turn the vest inside out like this um, and make sure you don't start sewing it like this. You know, you don't wanna start sewing it like from here, you wanna pick this up and then start sewing it. Otherwise you'll get stuck and you'll have to stop and start again. All right, so we'll line this up to the underarm seam, right sides together, and we're gonna sew at our full half inch seam allowance. And we're gonna line up the notches. But it should just fit perfectly. If you don't have your notches visible anymore, you should be fine. No tucks though, so be careful of that. And then when we get to this, this gathered area, we may have to let it out a little bit. You never know. Remember, the binding is stretchy, so just be careful. Don't stretch it too much. Try and keep your seam allowance nice and even. I put that gathering thread to the seam Just adjusting the fold, it didn't get ironed perfectly in half. We don't want our binding to get too narrow in one spot, so that's why I'm correcting this. See right here, getting that. Binding is a little hard to uh, fold in half. It has a mind of its own. Okay, we're back at the beginning. And then um, what we're gonna do is clip this armhole. especially down at the bottom where the curve is, down here. Make sure your binding doesn't fold up and get clipped. You don't wanna clip your good binding here. So just clip this armhole seam here. And you might even wanna trim this down a little bit because it's about the same width as the binding. So we'll just trim it and get it a little bit cleaner looking and with less thread so that they don't poke out of our seam. We're gonna understitch this. We're sort of pressing the seam allowance towards the binding. And keep your armhole relaxed, so don't stretch it. Like I'm always, like, like look at the bottom here of the vest. I'm always trying to pull this around and get the curve exactly how it's going to be, right? And then I'm going to, you know, try and splay apart some of that seam allowance there without stretching out the armhole. A little bit of a, a circus act, right? And it's just that lower part we're, we're really concerned with. All right, and now we're going to flip our vest right side out and we're going to stitch down our binding to the inside. So same thing if you don't have a free arm and you have to do it this way flat, flip your vest right side out and don't start sewing from here, pull this over and then start sewing. And press the binding down to the inside, line up your seam there to the underarm seam, and now we're just gonna stitch it down. So binding very easy, right? 
All right, and same thing like I do, like I've been telling you, I always pull this and kind of straighten it out. Let the armhole be in its position. Like I stitch it in this curve here. I'm also making sure I can see a little bit of my outer vest poking past this little edge right here so that I know my binding won't be visible on the right side. I keep smoothing and just making sure that this, this, is, this little section here is exactly how the vest is supposed to be while it's flat or being on the body. Hoping I'm not getting any tucks on the right side. And I can see a little bit of my seam allowance here poking out, so I'm just going to trim that very carefully. All right, one down, one to go. Just repeat for the same side. You can see this looks nice and clean. All right, so all that's left is your snaps. Okay, I'm not gonna really show you how to put your snaps on, but I thought I'd give you one tip that I think makes it a lot easier. This is something I just recently started playing around with and I think it's much, much faster. So what I do is I have the pattern here. I have it just folded back on the center front where the markings are and I've pinned my vest shut very precisely, perfectly lined up this side covering, just covering that stitching. You can button your your vest left over right or right over left. I'm, I'm choosing right over left. And I have it just perfectly lined up. Like that's very important. So now I have it this way. I also drew a center line down it using my little trusty plastic tool here. Um, just find a center between your stitching and the edge there so that you have a nice parallel row of snaps. And now, Mark where your snaps are gonna go. So you're gonna center your collar up above and below the seam line there. And then just put it right there on the line you drew and make your marking, all right? Same with this, right? Put this a half inch above, this was our seam allowance there, and mark each of your snaps. Now here's where my little tip comes in handy. Now I want you to mark both layers of your vest all the way through. I'm gonna use an awl here. You can use a screw punch or whatever it is that you're going to do, but just make sure that you press all the way through and then it's a very clear hole. Now you won't have to mark, after you put your snaps on, you won't have to mark the other side. This is such a huge time saver for me that I can't stress it enough that you need to have this very precisely pinned. And even still, like I could probably use one more pin so that there's one between each snap, so that when I go to put my finger under there, I grab it and I don't shift it. Now the other really important thing is I have a cutting mat inside my vest because sometimes if you use something like a screw punch like this and you're just pressing straight down, you wanna make sure you have a cutting surface under there. So just wanna make sure I say that. So yeah, just go down and then mark all of your snaps and you will only have to do it one time and you know they're going to line up. So that's my little tip. Thanks for sewing the Mercat Puffer Vest with me today. I can't wait to see yours. Until next time.